Voice is a tricky word in talking about literature. And um, I mean, I have a, a, a notion, I have two notions, maybe several, but I'll talk about two of them. Voice in fiction, voice in literature, is not generally the speaking voice of the person who tells it. It isn't, it isn't tone, the tone in Frank's voice. It is in, in, instead something, something somewhat larger and, and, and more abstract. It is, the, it is the music of the story's intelligence. And a story can be, it, the, a story's intelligence can become musical in all kinds of ways, in rhythms, in sentence structures, in where paragraphs break, uh, in, 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 in large uh, sort of movements in a book. That becomes part of the story's voice. How the story goes about doing what it does and how it sounds when it does it. It's when it's, how the story sounds when it's doing its best. But I think you're talking about something else. I think you're talking about Frank's speaking voice and how it sounds when you read it on the page and how it evokes in your mind some sense that there's somebody there. Well, <clears throat> that was something that I really inherited from a lot of other writers. I inherited it from Walker Percy. I inherited it from Joe Heller. I inherited it from, Fred from Frederick Exley. All of these guys who were writing in the first person with present tense verbs. And, and that really was, that really was the, the linchpin in, in creating that particular sound was that it was present tense verbs um, in the first person and, and probably borrowing he heavily at first and less heavily later from those writers who sort of inspired me. Uh, and I thought that the virtue for me of that speaking voice, and in some ways it's the virtue for those wonderful writers, particularly Percy's book, The Movie Goer, and particularly Joe Heller's book, Something Happened, which just got lost because it came along after Catch-22, and it was probably better than Catch-22, but nobody thought so. Yeah, yeah, it's a great book. And, and, and of course, Exley's book of fans' notes, um, which I hope you have all read. It's a great, great book written not very far from here. Um, yeah, A Fan's Notes by Frederick Exley. Uh, for me, that voice had the appeal of being of allowing me to get into the book things that I thought were both blissful and baleful and, 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 and allowed me to be smarter on the page than I probably was walking around on the street. I mean, you're always hoping that you'll create a conceit in your book which, which sort of ups the ante for you, which, which gives you something to strive for and gets you out of the normal kinds of kinds of reticences and the normal kinds of withholdings that you, that you exercise in, in daily life and which makes you sort of, as my friend Barry Hanna says, shoot for the stars. And um, that voice which I inherited and made my own to the extent I could allowed me to do that. <laughs>